اعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله بارئ الخلائق الأجمعين بائث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء حبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد ثم الصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين لا سيما ولي الله الحجة ابن الحسن صاحب الأمر والزمان اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد روحي وأرواح العالمين له الفداء ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الأولين والآخرين إلى قيام يوم الدين آمين رب العالمين أما بعد قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر صدق الله العلي العظيم وآمنا به نور مجالسكم بذكر محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجا وبعد respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله indeed for me it is an honor to be here in front of you today and to be back in the jamaat where I was born and where I've grown up and alhamdulillah with a very colorful memory of childhood it's almost a little bit embarrassing to sit in front of the elders of the community here <laughs> but in any way it is always good to be back home in Nairobi and without doubt one of the most vibrant jamaats um, that has been in the service of Ahlul Bayt in terms of participation in terms of community spirit and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, insha'Allah, that the bonds within the community get only stronger and stronger, insha'Allah, and we move towards the purpose of fully fulfilling the reason of our existence. All of this with the barakat of allowed salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Today's lecture, Ahibai, by way of an introduction. And this will set the tone and the precedence for the next 14 to 15 odd nights with the exception of the nights of Laylatul Qadr. Where the nights of Laylatul Qadr, the 19th and the 21st, and keeping in mind the 20th as well are three nights that we shall dedicate insha'Allah to the legacy left to us by Mawlana Amirul Mu'mineen. And these are three majalis that will be in particular to ma'rifah of Amir al-Mu'mineen through the Quran and the governance structure of Amir al-Mu'mineen. 23rd night, Laylatul Qadr, insha'Allah, will be reserved in particular for the greatness of this night and understanding the adhamah of Laylatul Qadr and the impact that it has not only in our dunya but on our akhirah. Outside of these nights, respected brothers and sisters, our theme for these blessed nights of Shahrul Ramadan is the personal perfection plan through the Quran. In order to introduce this topic, there is a series of introductions that need to be made. And the best introduction can be through Surah Al-Asr. See, Shahrul Ramadan, Shahrul Quran, the month of reciting the Quran, the month of contemplating over the Quran. And now we have a hadith from Ahlul Bayt that state the importance and the rewards of reciting Quran inside of Shahrul Ramadan as opposed to any other month. al-Mithal, by way of example, we have within the hadith that for a single verse of the Quran recited in Shahrul Ramadan, the thawab that is given to you is equivalent to an entire Khatmul Quran outside of Shahrul Ramadan. 
Allah Azza wa Jal truly when you say Bismillahir Rahman and Rahim, it is as if you can come to the conclusion that your Creator is looking for an excuse to make you enter into Jannah. One verse of the Quran you recite in Shahrul Ramadan. The thawab of this is an entire Khatmul Quran in any other month. You have a habit, for example, of reciting Surah Al Qadr in the morning. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatil Qadr. This one ayah that you have recited so easy on the tongue, you get the thawab of an entire Khatmul Quran. Those people who recite and complete the entire Quran every month, ask them the discipline and the effort that it is required to do so. The effort of that in this one verse. And this is from the magnificence of the month of Shahr Ramadan that we are supposed to maximize the benefit from this. In Surah Al Asr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by taking a qasam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wal asri inna al insana lafi khusr. Wow at the letter wow, Arabic language. The letter wow at the beginning of the surah, as per Arabic grammar, is known wow al qasam. There are certain letters within Arabic language that denote a qasam, that denote an oath. The letter wow, the letter ba, the letter ta, so wallahi, billahi, tallahi, for example, these are qasams. And if you take a qasam and you take an oath in vain, then there is an equivalent kafara that needs to be paid. In any case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with this qasam, wal asr. He takes an oath, the translation of the word asr, it can mean a number of things. It could mean... Allah is taking a custom by Salatul Asr, which shows us the importance of this Salat. And the Mufassirin of the Quran come forward and say, Wal Asr, yani Asr, it denotes the time of the Zuhur of Mawlana Sahib Al Amri Wa Zaman. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And this is from the beauty of the Quran, that any single word you are able to extract multiple meanings from it. This is the meaning that the Quran is a mu'jiza. And these are practical examples. If you ponder over each and every one of them, there are doors of ma'rifah that open from this. So the first possible meaning is Salatul Asr, the importance of Salatul Asr. The second meaning is that Allah is taking a qasam by that point in time where the reappearance of the awaited savior of mankind. How muqaddas and how divine is that time? Allah takes a qasam by this time. The third interpretation is by the meaning, the word al-asr, yani time. Allah Azza wa Jal is taking an oath by time. I swear by time. Indeed, inna al-insana lafi khusra. Indeed, mankind is at loss. The letter Alif Lam preceding the word Insan, Alif Lam Lil Istighraq. In Arabic language, they say all human beings without exception. Ali Muhammad Hussein, wherever you are in the world, Fatima Zainab, whoever you are, as a human being without any exception, all mankind is at loss. Subhanallah, how about this for an opening statement? Allah takes a custom and says, man is at loss. Generally, motivational speech, positivity, entails that you start with a positive message. We have this in classes of self-motivation, self-development, encouragement, whatever it is. Whether you're a madrasa teacher, whether you're a manager at a corporate level, at your own business level, you're always taught the rule of the thumb is motivate your employees in a positive manner. Yet, when you come to this verse in the Quran, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the creator of everything within existence, changes the entire measure and starts out with a statement filled with what can be perceived as so much negativity. The idea is to put man into a state of shock, 
such that it triggers contemplation from the minute you are born this is understanding surah al-asr from the minute you are born allah azza wa jalla is saying you are at a loss we are a community of businessmen so we understand the language of money rokra but no one can say no one understands the language of rokra not necessarily bad thing but as businessmen accountants our life is like this asset that depreciates in value from the time that it is bought vehicle as soon as you buy the vehicle from the showroom regardless of whether you're going to use it for 10000 miles or 20000 miles the minute you've bought this the value of your vehicle depreciates majority of the times Allah Azza wa Jal says man is at loss and he takes a qasam by time why qasam by time and why is man at loss you find that the message behind these two verses of the Quran is that man is at a loss because generally speaking the human being rarely ever appreciates the value of time until it's lost and this is one of those underlying messages that if it is not taken on board from an early point in life there is nothing but regret because time is one of those assets that cannot be regained cannot be recovered yesterday finished 20th of may 2019 will never come back whether you use that day in the obedience of allah azza wa jal you use that day in disobeying allah azza wa jal whether you were productive or not khalas finished it's not coming back the best way to understand the value of time you speak to the elders i wish i was a youth i wish if i had that opportunity to wind back time 10 15 20 30 years ago what i could have achieved what i could have done the potentials that i could have met but it's too late it's done which is why we have a hadith by the final messenger of allah where he says sallallahu alaihi wa sallam where he says take advantage of your youth before your old age because after that there is nothing but regrets and there is nothing more devastating than for a person to be on the deathbed and he sees this angel of death in front of him but this is not supposed to be takhwif it's not supposed to be depressing or scary but it's about a reality that we are going to face whether we like it or we don't like it it's going to happen is a prediction of the future that Allah azza wa jal has put for us within the Quran those who want to take lesson from it ahlan wa marhaban those who don't want it's for them to lose people pay millions of dollars to be able to predict the future have you seen the industry for palm reading you have anyone who's learned any type of ghasiya to come and read your palm and to make you feel good about your future and predict the future and we go and we pay money for it and half of the time it's nothing but rubbish over here allah azza wa jalla has given us our entire future what you want to predict what you want to know about your life habibi i'm giving it to you in the quran free of charge nothing more devastating than that regret that a person faces when he finally sees malakul maut in front of him and this is mentioned as a reality within the quran he will say to malakul maut he'll say to allah ya allah give me one more day balki give me one more hour just so that i could do one more good deed game over time is finished you had these 20 30 40 50 60 years for realizing and appreciating the value of time 
It is a type of an asset. If wasted and lost, can never be regained, can never be recovered. And our life pretty much can be summed up in this example in terms of time. See, back in the day in Najaf al-Ashraf, I think I may have mentioned this here or somewhere else before. In Najaf al-Ashraf, at least up to seven, eight years ago, electricity used to be a very big problem. And even till now, to in a great part of Iraq, electricity is an issue. And alhamdulillah, most of the times when we go for ziyara, we are in the hotels and you know all the facilities are there, water, electricity, so we don't really get to see the hardships that are there. But the life inside of Iraq, people have seen difficulties. And electricity used to be a big problem. You used to get rationed electricity from the government for two or three hours a day. And if you earn an X amount of money, you can afford to get a generator. If not, mushkil. And the temperatures in Najaf in the summer, ya masha Allah, 45, 50 degrees it would get up to. So you can imagine 50 degrees heat, baking heat of Najaf, you don't have electricity. You can't use the fan, you can't use the AC. Wala she moat, sidik moat. And if you are fasting Shahrul Ramadan, Allah. Remember many times we used to go to the haram to do the ziyarah of Amirul Mu'mineen, but at the same time benefit from the air condition inside of the haram. Moat. So what they used to do is inside of Najaf. They used to have the people with the carts. You know, when you go for ziyarah and they load all the luggages, the boys with the arabanas, the carts. You used to have in Najaf, the person will come out between 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning. You have only one hour. 7 to 8 a.m. And what he has done is he's got this big chunk of ice. It's a big block of ice that he has put on the cart. And his job between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. is to make a round in the neighborhood. Whoever wants to buy a block of ice, whoever wants to buy a block of ice, he makes that announcement. Because you don't have electricity, your freezer is not working, your fridge is not working. Alalakal, you need some sort of cold water, you open the tap, with boiling water from the tap, your tank is on top of the roof, the nylon tank has been heated, natural heating. So he would come and he would shell, you come and you chop your block of ice and you take it and you use the cold water for whatever you need because the ice is melting. Our life comes here, example of our life. See, this person who sells the ice, he's got one hour to make sales. He's walking out in a street where the temperature is 30, 35 degrees, 40 degrees maybe sometimes. Him, as a businessman, he's thinking, I have got one hour to sell this ice. For every minute that this ice is unsold, I am making a loss. Why? The ice is melting. If you don't work, and if you are not sharp, or if you don't have a strategy for every minute that has passed by without you making a sale, you are in a loss. Because once this ice melts, it is not coming back. Finished. Till tomorrow. You can't. I buy our life is like this. Time is like this. It's a massive ice block that is just melting away. And it is up to us to take advantage of this time before it's too late. Which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes this approach in a very stern manner in the Quran to shake a person to really understand and digest this reality. <clears throat> because at the end of the day, it's an asset that's not recoverable. Tayyib, if we understand this, how do you live a life where you don't squander your time? How do you fulfill this purpose of existence without squandering your life? It needs a motivation. The motivation behind this is to understand the purpose of your existence. Why were you created? 
What is the reason for your existence in this dunya? What is the purpose of your existence here in Nairobi? If I say the purpose of my existence is just to eat and drink and to procreate and to provide for my family, Alhamdulillah, this is good and it's very important. And we have an entire bath just on this financial success and the Islamic responsibility that we have in order to be financially successful. To be financially successful. We have an entire lecture on that, that's for sure. But it's not the only thing. If we limit ourselves to this, then Ajallakumullah, we are no more different than animals. Ham haywan of sushi. Haywan, with all due respect, is in the same case. What is the major concern of the haywan? Food and drink. Ani is a human being, food and drink. An animal is also concerned about securing its territory. If you look into the wildlife, you see that certain animals you have, like the lions, for example, they're very territorial. Now we are also territorial. We want to mark our shelters and whatnot. So how are we different from animals? When it comes to understanding the purpose of my existence, why am I created? For what reason? <clears throat> if we understand the purpose of our existence, then we are able to understand what we need to do in order to fulfill that. So if you see, there is an entire silsila. The first point is to understand that my life is something that is special. The time that I have is time that is limited. And once it's lost, I can't regain that. So it creates within me a sense of urgency. Once I feel this sense of urgency, how do I spend my life in a meaningful way? In order to do this, I must have a goal. I must understand the purpose of my existence. What is the purpose of my existence? Who draws out this purpose of existence for me? Have you seen in every business, you have a mission statement. Enter as an entrepreneur, you have certain goals that you want to achieve. For us in our existence, who marks, who decides what is the purpose of our existence? Where do you go to seek these answers? We come back to the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Dhariyat says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal-insa illa li'abudun. I did not create the jinn and the ins except that they should be in a perfect state of ibadah, worship. Now over here the meaning of the word worship is very very general. Sometimes people are of the opinion that oh, we were created, yani ibadah, we are always on the musalla, always reciting namaz, always reciting salat, always reciting dua and not doing anything else. La, with all ihtaram for salat and dua, this is a part of ibadah. But the word ibadah is much greater. What is meant over here is that you have not been created. I did not create the jinn or the mankind except that they should spend every breath of their existence in my obedience. Whether you're at work, whether you're at home. Whether you're in the mosque, your interaction with your family, your interaction with your employers and your employees, your relationship with your children, your relationships with your colleagues. Every aspect of your life is one in which you are in compliance with the divine command of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it is this sort of compliance that secures you. The happiness that every man and woman is looking for. And there is much to talk on this over the next 15 nights insha'Allah. Tayyib. So you understand there is a sense of urgency. And you understand that the purpose of our existence is that we need to be in a perfect state of worship. In a perfect state of obedience. Having said this, another point, Bainal Kausain between brackets, the importance of setting goals that are spiritual as well as non-spiritual. 
For every morning that you wake up, you need to have a purpose for which you have woken up for. And that needs to incorporate a material aspect as well as a spiritual aspect. If you understand the purpose of your existence, and you understand that this dunya is a dunya that is temporary, and there is a realm of existence that you and I are moving towards that is far much more grander than this dunya. And it's a realm of existence in which we are going to spend eternity. How do we prepare for this? Contemplation is key. And this is where Shahru Ramadan comes in. Sometimes perfection and improvement is not only restricted to seeking knowledge and knowledge and knowledge and knowledge in terms of quantity, Abadallah. It is through this process of tafkir, contemplation and thinking, self reflection. In order for us to fulfill the purpose of our existence, and if I summarize this for you, because our time is also almost up and we have many nights to come, inshallah, we can continue. You and I, when we are setting out the goals and the purpose of our existence, what we want to achieve, let me put out a reality for you. You and I, we are at the door of a grand revolution that is about to happen. A revolution that is going to change the manner in which this world exists and the manner in which this world operates from every possible conceivable dimension, be it political, be it financial, be it social. You are at the door of a revolution whether you understand it or not. This revolution is the dhuhur of Mawlana Sahib al-Amri wa zaman Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The hadith says, and the reappearance of the awaited Savior shall happen like the blink of an eye. Habibi, whether you are ready or not, this revolution is happening. Whether you want to be a part of it or not is your choice, depending on how prepared we are today. We are at the doorstep of living in a world that is free of poverty and free of injustice. And every day that passes, we are getting closer to that dhuhr. The question is, do we feel it or not? If a person dies before the dhuhr happens, it's a different story. In fact, he is given the opportunity through alam al raja to come back to the dunya, to be with the 12th Imam. So it's not that it was preparation in waste, Abadan la. Hence, if we understand this reality, that this Imam is coming, Yamla ul arda adlan wa kistan kama muli at dhulman wa jawra. He is coming to fill the world with peace and justice. Whether we recognize this or not, whether we want to be a part of this or not. We need to be prepared if we aspire to be a part of this movement. There is something very great about being a part of a movement as opposed to being a plain beneficiary of a movement. It depends on what you want to be. Leaders who make change or those who are followers of trends. So if part of our purpose of existence and the part of our plan is that we want to be a part of this revolution of Imam al hujja to be from amongst the Ansar and the Ashab, there are a number of action points that need to be implemented and the one of them is developing our personality and developing our character in a manner that allows us to be successful in the dunya and the akhirah. And this, inshallah, 
is the topic for our next 15 nights. Self-development. Personality traits and characters that we need to develop within ourselves to be leaders and successful in the dunya as well as the akhirah. Where do we get these characters from? Where do we get these personality traits from? We get them from the Quran. So from tomorrow, inshallah, the bahath, the discussion is going to be a very Quranic discussion where I myself will have the Quran with me and I think the... MC was saying they're going to have slides as well, PowerPoint presentation, so we can follow the ayahs together. If you want to come with your own Quran with the translation and make notes, alhamdulillah, that is Nur al-Nur, you want to follow the verses, we will go every night through maybe five or six different verses. You want to follow the verses through your smartphones, whatever it is, but inshallah, discussions that are interactive, the opportunity where you can ask questions during the majlis as well, it will be as informal as possible but structured at the same time and this is in order for us to have uh, a beneficial discussion inshallah one in which each and every one of us are interacting and within this not only do we get to develop our personalities see what are our own weaknesses you don't need somebody to, to tell you what your weakness is as an individual. The Quran is a mirror where it reflects for you and it is as if you can see yourself. What are your weaknesses? What are your strengths? What you need to develop and what you need to leave aside. So inshallah, 15 nights of self-development through the Quran in a manner that is beneficial, inshallah, in a manner that is uh, vibrant, that has energy in it, and something that we can all, after 15 nights, we can use this as a base to develop ourselves for the rest of the year. With the barakat of as salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. To end the majlis, ahibai masaib. Masaib of Ahlul Bayt is very important. On a daily basis to have masaib. Because had it not been for Karbala, you and I would not have a member to benefit from today. Had it not been for Karbala, you and I would not have a deen to follow today. And as we benefit from the ilm of Ahlul Bayt, it only makes sense that we pay tribute to them by remembering their tragedy. After all, they got persecuted so that you and I can seek guidance from them. And for some reason, my heart tells me today that we remember the Masaib of Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyidah Khadija. And even though it was her Shahada just a few nights back, we pay tribute to her by remembering her tragedy. This lady who was a wali from the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who spent her entire wealth in the way of Islam. They used to say the trading caravans of Sayyidah Khadija from the entire Makkan expedition, Rihlatul Shita, it was safe, the way it says in the Quran, from 10 caravans that would leave Makkah, nine of them would be that of Sayyidah Khadija. As an individual, her wealth equaled to 90% of the entire wealth in Makkah. A woman of this much wealth, on her deathbed, she didn't have a coffin. You and I know how difficult it is to remove that 100 shillings and to put in a donation box. Sayyidah Khadija, her entire wealth, coffin she didn't have. This is why in the narrations it mentions that on her deathbed, Sayyidah Khadija said out to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, when I leave this dunya, I want you to wrap me with the cloak which you used to wear in order to get revelation, the Abba of Rasulullah that he used to wear when he used to get to Wahi. Sayyidah Khadija says, Ya Rasulullah, O oh my master, shroud me in this robe of yours. Because from her wealth, she had nothing remaining for a coffin. When Sayyidah Khadija passed away, Rasulullah tearfully wept, and he gave Sayyidah Khadija the ghusl, and he wrapped her in his Abba. He 
raised his hands towards the heavens and he said, Ya Allah, you were witness that this is Khadija who spent her wealth in the way of your deen. The narrations mention that Jibreel descended down from the heavens and he came down to Rasul Allah and he said to him, O Rasul Allah, Allah grants you his salams and he has brought down a special coffin for Khadija. For Sayyidah Khadija was wrapped in two coffins, the Abba of Rasul Allah and the coffin that came from Jannatul A'la. When Rasul Allah placed Sayyidah Khadija in the Qabr, Rasulullah began to weep. I say, Ya Rasul Allah, you weep on the tragedy of Sayyidah Khadija and you have laid her in the grave with two coffins, but come to Karbala. Come to Karbala. This is Abba Abdullah Al Hussein on the plains without a ghusl and a coffin for three days while Zainab cries out, Ya Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah Allahumma inna nas'aluka bihaqq Sayyidah Khadija Allahumma ajjil li waliyyina al-faraj We pray to Allah Azza wa Jal by the sake of Sayyidah Khadija to hasten the reappearance of Imam al-Hujjah We pray to Allah Azza wa Jal by the sake of Sayyidah Khadija to forgive us our sins on a night like this Pray to Allah Azza wa Jal by the sake of Sayyidah Khadija to accept our fasting on this day. You pray to Allah Azza wa Jal by the sake of Sayyidah Khadija. Mu'mineen and Mu'minat who have hajat, Ya Allah, do not let anybody leave this center Mubarakah today until and unless you have fulfilled their hajat. Ya Allah, Mu'mineen and Mu'minat who are not in the best of health, you grant them shafa'ah by the sake of Sayyidah Khadija. Marhumin and Marhumat who have passed away, Ya Allah, by the sake of Sayyidah Khadija, you make their graves into a garden from the gardens of Jannah. وآخر الدعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين يقول الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما